Hello, and welcome to Let's Talk Midlife Crisis with your hosts, Ashley and Tracy. And today we're going to talk about midlife hacks, tips, and tricks um, during midlife. Um, A couple things that I thought I would start with, or something that I thought I would start with, and I thought this was very empowering, was that we cannot feel unhappy and thankful at the same time. Oh. So you kind of got to pick and choose on that one. But of course you want to pick. Yeah. I mean, who wants to be unhappy? Right. Yeah. (laughs) So the thing is to be, you know, focus on gratitude, right? Okay. So Um, if you're unhappy, focus on things you're grateful for. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Because gratitude um, and worry, you can increase your happiness by 25%. Just by thinking about things that you're grateful for mm. versus dwelling on things that you're not. Wow. And that, you know. Yeah. Make you feel unhappy, which is... But I also think that that's partly trained. Like, it's yes. not easy to do it. It's a cognizant, a cognizance, a weight thing that you have to instill. Yeah, there's... You know, it's funny. Um, my fiance's aunt was here this past week and her mom lives in an assisted living home and they have a very unique relationship the dynamic is interesting um her mom's very critical about her and and i and she says things about herself that make me it it makes me feel bad because it's like you know like i said before if you're told something so much, you right. start to believe it. Right. I was going to say her beliefs. So yeah. her mom instilled yeah. these beliefs in her and so it just, like, that are negative. It breaks my heart. But, you know, she she was telling me some stories about her mom. And, and she said, you know, she's just a, the cup is half empty right. type of gal. Right. You know? Right. And I was going to say, I think some people, it comes a lot more naturally for them to yes. be grateful and and a cup half full yes. type of person, oh, absolutely. you know, absolutely. Um, and I, whether or not that's natural or they trained themselves that way, I don't know. Um, or maybe a combination of both. Yeah. 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 Because my last boyfriend was very negative, negative, okay. negative, negative. And then when you think about it, and at first, you know, um, it was, I, th- I personally thought of it. My belief was we balanced each other out. Oh. Right? Um, because he was so negative, and I tended to be so positive. Mm-hmm. Exactly what you said. Ha- glass half empty, glass half full. Right. But after 10 years... <laughs> oh, gosh. I realized that he was really dragging Bringing me you down, down. Yeah. You know? So, but there really is something to that. Um, but I try to train my thoughts mm-hmm. to... Because you have like thousands and thousands of thoughts per second, right? Right. So it's what you, you know, um, pull from that and, um, you know, attach yourself to, which it's just always been said that it's so much easier to, you know, attach yourself to the negative Mm -hmm. beliefs and thoughts um, and words that you hear than to the positive. But I've always been, uh, you know, glass half full kind of person. Yeah. And Yeah, you definitely have. Had to. And that relationship, too. And I think, too, um, this is a practice that um, my fiancé and I I have used with my kids um, because they get, you know, in moments of being overwhelmed with life and, you know, adulting and all of that and and worry. They're worry warts. Right. Um, And think about the thing that you're worrying about. First of all, is it something you can change? Right. Can, can you make that, whatever it is, better? And if not, then to accept think it. about whether or not you're going to really care about that thing in six months or six years. Right now, you're really upset about it, but will you be in six months? Right. Is it really that big a deal? Right. You know? So I think that's another way to kind of deal with stress or... I like that. Things that make you unhappy. Yeah, definitely think about things you're grateful for, for, but remind yourself, is this, does it really matter that much to me? Right. You know? Yeah. And will it matter that much to me in the future? Exactly. To waste my energy and, you know, emotions Mm -hmm. and time on it. I love that. I love that. 
Um, so I've been doing a lot of research on hacks and tips and tricks and, and you know, just kind of simple things because mm -hmm. I feel like in today's society as well, we're looking for that quick fix, right? Like, yes. oh, just tell me something really quick. And, you know, I mean, you Instant could do... Instant satisfaction. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. But, and I seem to find the same things over and over and over again for midlife, right? Um, so th three ways to de-stress is to drink holy basil tea, um, also called Tulsi tea. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it increases physical and mental endurance. Mm -hmm. It has so many benefits. Um, that was something Allison it's something brought up that Allison when brought she up, joined us, which yeah. is funny because I and she had, swore by it. That yes, was one of her. Yes. The, the two things that she could keep, that if she could only have two. Exactly. Was I'm one of like, them. narrow it down. Yeah. You know, if I just had two things, well, I said one, but she's like, no, I need yeah. two. I'm like, okay, two. But sometimes it's hard in the world where there's so many choices to right. narrow it down. But we've also had a lot of um, listeners reach out to us mm -hmm. and say that they have since ordered their products. Oh, good. Good, um, good. Since listening to those um, previous episodes, That's great. and one listener, a good friend of ours, Law, she said she was Googling uh -huh. as we were talking about these, you know, oh, different good. remedies and I what they're that. good for and stuff, and immediately was, you know, adding things to her shopping bag. Wow. Um, for Amazon. So she's ordered them and That's great. will definitely come back with um, her results her yeah. results, or other people's results. We'll have results. to have so, her on as a guest to, to let us know yes. her experience. She'll have to come back now. as a guest. Yeah. And also, if you have, you know, hacks and tips and tricks that have helped you through midlife, please share them with us, you know, at Let's Talk Midlife Crisis on Instagram or Let's Talk Midlife Crisis website um, or Facebook accounts. So we definitely want to hear those. Um, so three ways to de-stress is to drink holy basil tea. Um, also, breath work, mm. which I've used breath work through work because I used to present to clients mm -hmm. um, in a very competitive atmosphere. And um, we would go in, it would be like agencies pitching an account. Right. So it'd be like one after the other after the other. So oftentimes you're sitting outside and you can kind of hear what's going oh, on into, you know, in this yeah. conference room, um, what the previous agency is, you know, pitching. But, and as a way to de-stress, my old boss taught me about breathing techniques. And basically mm -hmm. it's just, you know, inhaling through your nose, through the, slowly, through the count of four and exhaling again through the count of four um, and continuing to do that two or three mm -hmm. times. And it does tend to help you de-stress um, a little bit. I have found that going into those Yeah, meetings. I think especially if you're, you know, you're breathing at a fast pace and don't realize it and your heart's yeah, racing. Exactly. And, um, I've mentioned before um, a couple of my kids deal with some anxiety and um, they've, you know, through high school and um, shortly after, it was really tough for them and, and figuring out what worked for them to calm themselves down. But one of the things was breathing. Yeah. Um, just as an example, my son one day was at work and the cash, the, the whole internet went down. So they had no way to take people's money. Who carries cash anymore, right? Right. Um, it's so funny so that now, <laughs> the difference is now, like when the internet crashes, everybody's it's world over. stops. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. so, you know, they had a line. It was a, it was an ice cream shop. They had a line of people with ice cream that was, you know, melting that they oh, wanted to pay wow. for. But they all had debit cards and there was no way to take their money. And of course, you know, they're getting irritated and he's freaking out. Like, I don't know what to do. And literally had to walk into, they had like a little janitor's closet. He had to walk in there, shut the door, and just do his breathing mm -hmm. exercise. Yeah. <laughs> and then he said, I was fine. I walked back out. I handled it, you know. So that's just an example. Right. Um, but yeah, it does. It, Definitely it really, really, that. it's really right. effective. And it they is. say that it's also effective in lowering b blood pressure. But mm -hmm. because I've suffered from such high, extreme high blood pressure for so many years, decades, mm -hmm. I'm not going to stop taking my blood pressure yeah. medicine. <laughs> However, I just, I think that it's a good coping, mm -hmm. you know, a mechanism to use to de-stress. Um, 
But again, don't, you know, necessarily stop taking medication, but it also is supposedly good for lowering bre- blood pressure. And I could see how that would be. Yeah, how because that it could calms your heart. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, mm-hmm. absolutely. And then, of course, go out for a walk. Yes. You know. Sunshine. Yeah. Stress homo- hormones are greatly reduced um, with just a 20 minute walk. So it doesn't even have to be you know, a long walk. Mm -hmm. Um, It could be if you work from home or even if you work from an office, maybe, you know, just in the weather is nice, just go out and take a walk. If you have the ability to do so and you're stressed, please, you know, take a walk. I know that in my younger self, I would take walks more often than I do now. Mm -hmm. I just remember being so upset and like being ready to explode and I would just bolt out the door Yeah, and just go for a, a long walk. But I don't seem to do that as much anymore um, for whatever reason. But I know that at that time it worked and I probably should implement that more. Right. Into yeah. my... And and that's also good for, you know, cardio yeah. health. Just, you yeah. know, moving around. Right. So And that's huge. And through all the research, uh, like I said, it just seems like three things keep coming back up mm-hmm. when it comes to midlife. You know, it's diet. Yes. You know, exercise. Um, you know, and movement and, and what you intake, of course, which part of diet, but, and your movement. So, um, I do think it's very important. And even if you didn't practice it a lot before, Mm -hmm. you know, maybe it's something that you can implement now and easy things for me would Mm -hmm. even be like to go check the mail. Right. Right. Because I work from home, maybe at lunch. Get outside. Yeah. Get outside (laughs) and just take a walk and check the mail. Or it could be something as simple as that. Mm -hmm. You know, if it's in your neighborhood and you have a pet, take your pet out for a walk. Right. Um, You know, those types of things. Or even in the city, you can always take your pet for a walk and, and, um, and that gets your cardio, Mm -hmm. right? Which is the exercise and, and also, you know, getting into nature. I guess even if you live in a big city, being outside is still yeah. in some and respect. S- you'll still see trees and yeah, you know, getting like into that. nature. So, yeah, yeah, absolutely. So now this one I thought was interesting and I'm just in the middle of trying it. So you'll have to try it and let us know if it works for you. Um, but apparently an avocado, mm-hmm. the pit of an avocado, which I think most people have always thrown away. Oh, yeah is very, very useful for pain and inflammatory joints, all kinds of things like that. So so you don't eat it, do you? No, well, you don't eat it. When you you basically, hopefully, you'll use the avocado for something if you're making a dip or what have you, guacamole. Mm -hmm. Um, But you cut the avocado in half and you Mm -hmm. take out the pit and then you slice up that pit. Oh. And then you put those slices into a spray bottle and fill that with alcohol, about 75% alcohol base. So alcohol, alcohol, um, to cover enough to cover the, um, the pits, the avocado pits and, and that's it. And then spray it on yourself wherever, if it's, uh, lately my hands have been, my joints and my hands and my thumbs, like I I have a hard time grabbing drinks and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And gripping. And when I last saw my PC, he's like, well, you know, let's talk about it next time you come in and maybe I'll give you some shots, right? Uh But so I think in between now and then, I'm going to try this remedy. But basically, you just spray it on and you rub it. Okay. And then give it about a week uh, to see the... I mean, it sounds like it's like a hand sanitizer, you know, Mm -hmm. with with the alcohol that's in it. But Um, there's something about that avocado pit. And I think it's most um, used for... um, knees i think maybe mm. because a lot of people have knee injuries yeah. or what have you that even if you've had surgery i truly believe that they never it heal never totally, yeah it's never yeah. the same um but that was something that was um interesting to me about pain and joints and inflammation mm-hmm. and and like i said i'm in the middle of trying it so i'll Let report back the results and um again i can't say it enough how much um, we would love to hear your hacks and tips and tricks for things that you use or have used or have heard of um, that you would like to test. Maybe mm-hmm. we could be your... Um, Guinea pigs. G- yeah. <laughs> or or testers. Your, yeah. <laughs> 
Um, yeah, the focus group for your... Um, there we go. Yeah, for... I knew there was a word I was looking for. <laughs> three three mimosas later, I found it. Um, but for your focus groups. Right. Um, you know, and what works and what doesn't work. But we definitely want to hear. So reach out to us on social at Let's Talk Midlife Crisis. Um, and also, this is something that I've used many years ago. Mm-hmm. Wild yam cream. Oh, yes. You told me about mm-hmm. this. And I know that we've talked about it before, but basically you can find it. And there's a plethora, mm-hmm. a plethora of products out there. Okay. And I honestly don't think one is perhaps, you know, better than another. Right. I personally like to look at reviews. Mm-hmm. I'm the same way. I feel so bad when I say that. I have such regret because I don't always give reviews, but I use them. But often. I rely on them. Yes, yes. I rely yeah. on them when making purchasing decisions. But yeah, look at some wild yam cream and put it on twice a day, morning and night, maybe on your thigh or um, you know under your arm, above your elbow, mm-hmm. a fatty part um, of your body. And do that for three weeks and then off for a week um, and then repeat. But it's very good for, um, it's a natural alternative to estrogen replacement therapy. Interesting. And menopause. Mm. However, if you're perimenopausal, Mm -hmm. um, it's also good for PMS tension and heavy periods. Oh. Yeah. So as well as painful periods and depression. Wow. Wow. Um, And thyroids. But again, not everything works for everyone. Mm -hmm. So you kind of got to maybe just try things to see what works for you, what doesn't work for you, um, and those types of things. But yeah, definitely recommend trying wild yam cream if you're suffering heavy PMS or, um, you know, menopause, perimenopausal, menopausal, excuse me, etc. Also, One of our mutual friends is going through a session right now of um, acupuncture. Acupuncture. (laughs) I I saw the of acupuncture. (laughs) Um, So we were talking about that very recently, and Uh she actually she's been doing this for I would say just over a month. I was going to say I think it's about a month. Just over a month. So you know she's went through a couple cycles, Uh and she actually seems to feel that it has increased. Yeah, a lot of things. So not the hopefulness that she was looking for. Right. You know, but, you know, her periods are longer and harder Uh. and different things. But, again, everybody's different and reacts differently. Um, And we also had talked about Reiki, Mm -hmm. which is something that we'll get into a little bit further on. But I think that that's another alternative um, and maybe a holistic way. Right. To um, approaching things that are coming up in your middle in midlife, right? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, and then foods to eat to sleep better because I know that you know going through midlife and especially through perimenopause or menopause, and Lord knows with hot flashes, oh, they're if killing think, me lately. Yeah. Oh. <clears throat> Excuse me. If you think you're not sleeping well now, and wait till you get to the hot flash stage, mm-hmm. and and for me it was I was so hot and I throw the blankets off and then I get so freezing cold. cold. Yes. yes. It was oh. just not pleasant. Not pleasant. Yeah. So those for me, I didn't start experiencing those until just a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. And it's, in fact, it happened. I was getting my hair done the other day and it happened in the salon and I did it start was, from your head. Oh my gosh. Yeah. It's when they like, start from your head. It's, it's yeah. And I, and I'm hot to the touch. Yeah. yeah that's how I feel. And, yeah. Yeah. Like you're on fire. And I just was like, I am going to strip down in this salon right now. Yeah. Like I just could feel it radiating from yes. my body. Oh yes. Yeah, and at night brutal. I think it's worse because you don't have the option. Maybe if it's during the day and depending on the climate you live in, maybe you jump in the pool or mm-hmm. go jump in the snow mound, right? right. Like in the winter right. and spring that everyone is, you know, experiencing all these massive snow amounts. But just go out there and dive. I could see myself doing that, Absolutely. honestly. Fully clothed and everything. Just going out and just diving into it. Yeah. But, um, but foods um, that you eat mm-hmm. can help... It, with hot flashes with, at night? With better sleep. Okay. Overall, better sleep okay. and or hot flashes. But I think ultimately um, better sleep because okay. even if you have them, 
hot flashes. Mm -hmm. And maybe if they don't wake you up, then that's still a good thing. Yeah. Um, But I remember waking up in the morning, even when I didn't wake up at night, and just kind of feeling gross, right? Yeah, yeah. the sheets got soaked from the sweat. and Yeah. Yes, but in the mornings, so one of the little tricks that I like to do, and then we'll get into the foods um, that you eat to help um, you sleep better, Mm -hmm. but one of the things that I would do in the morning is I would take a shower, and I'm ultimately one that takes a very hot shower. Like, Mm -hmm. I turn it all the way hot um, and, you know, pretty much go shower until the water, (laughs) the hot water runs out, but at the very end, if you turn it all the way to cold... Mm -hmm. It really, it, it like jump starts your body and your brain oh, and stuff. I so, would, it would make me jump out of the shower. <laughs> yes, very much so. I think it's more of a gradual thing, but it definitely is. And it's something that, you know, it's a cognizant thing. Like right. you have to make yourself stand in there for yeah. whatever X, yeah. Y, Z amount of time. I think it, it's really good for your skin too. For it your is pores. good for your skin. It's mm-hmm. good for your pores. It's good for mental clarity. Um, and it helps, for me, I use it when I feel very you know lethargic after i just woke mm-hmm. up and still very groggy and maybe you know foggy minded fog brain and stuff um and i turn that ice cold water right. on mostly in the winter time and we live in arizona and in the summer our it water doesn't, doesn't get that cold no and there's no cold water <laughs> but i can imagine if you lived in a colder weather climate how icy that water can mm-hmm. be but either way just you know having that ice cold water just kind of jolts your body um, you know, to, uh, and it helps with so many different things. So I think it's good. Um, but foods to eat, to sleep better. We all know about Turkey. Oh gosh. Right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> the levels of, you know, um, tryptophan that are in Turkey, um, you know, it makes you so tired after you eat Thanksgiving mm-hmm. dinner. But what are, <clears throat> excuse me, some other foods that include, um, tryptophan, milk really but it's not i'm not as shocked by that one because i mean people a lot of people have yeah warm milk before they go to bed so yeah that makes sense right right from the old days where they didn't have so many different things and right like Mm -hmm. you just had limited stuff and maybe before electricity and they're like oh let's warm some milk but bananas oats and chocolate all wow. have high levels of tryptophan that allow you and help you sleep. Okay. Which is interesting. I could handle having chocolate before bed every night. Right. <laughs> which is shocking. And of course, you want to stay away from the things that are known to keep, keep you, you awake. Yeah. Right? Like coffee, mm-hmm. you know, caffeine, those types of things. They say even smoking. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think one of the things that's really important, especially in this day and age, are screens. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Right. Um, you know, you want to stay away from screens from at least an hour before you go to bed. Right. Right. Um, but I thought this was interesting and, and I kind of, I'm not, I, I believe it because I think that this particular food in itself is very healthy, but several health, um, experts recommend consuming peanut butter at night to boot, to boost muscular building and normalize blood sugar levels hmm. and increase your sleep quality. Interesting. So yeah, it has outstanding nutrient, um, you know, nutrients in it, and um, it's a filling snack too. Yeah, right. I love, so even I if mean, it's on toast or a cracker, oh, I'll just or, eat a spoonful of peanut butter. Yeah, I love peanut yeah. butter. Yeah, or with an apple. But just, you know, know that it will, on top of it being very healthy for you, mm-hmm. right, with the proteins and all that good stuff, um, it may help you sleep as well. Right. So maybe instead of having a cup of coffee, get a sp- spoonful of peanut butter. I like that. Right. Um, and also, kiwi. There's a lot of Ooh, fruits. Oh, I like kiwi. Yeah, kiwi, cherries, fatty fish, nuts, and rice. Hmm. Yeah. Have all been found to aid in relaxation and sleep. And again, we talked about, you know, caffeine, avoiding caffeine and screens and stuff. But something that is also important to avoid, which mm-hmm. is maybe not as easy as some of the other things, is alcohol. Oh, yeah. I think that there's a misperception that if you are, have been drinking, it helps you sleep. No. But it's exactly the opposite. opposite. Yeah. 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 And especially, I think, so for So how women... long should I wait after my evening glass of wine to go to bed? <laughs> 
<laughs> well, you know, and everybody's different, but I would say probably about an hour yeah, or so. I would think I so. I think with everything, it's about an hour before you go to bed. Yeah. Um, but also, if you are drinking, there mm-hmm. are some other hacks that okay. maybe, I don't know, maybe no, not everybody knows about, but drinking a glass of water mm-hmm. and uh, either a Tylenol or an aspirin before you go to bed too. Right. Definitely helps how you feel when you wake up if you've been if you've been drinking too much. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which is always, you know, I shouldn't say always, but you know, it's easy to, you know, right. overindulge in that area. But yeah, <laughs> some of these fruits, you know, kiwis and cherries and um, you know, fatty fish, so maybe mm-hmm. you, you know, consciously plan a meal around that. Right. And a dessert around that. And then, you know, see how it, how your body reacts to um, it. I think, is it bananas that have a lot of magnesium? Mm. Uh, magnesium yes. really helps with And melatonin. Too. Melatonin. Okay. So bananas provide up to 26% of your daily recommended intake of melatonin. However, wow. the shocking thing about it is um, those high levels just before bedtime um, can make it hard for you to fall asleep at night. Oh, interesting. So peanut butter, yes. Bananas, no. Hmm. All right. I know. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting, huh? Um, it is interesting. Yeah. Let's see. What are some other great hacks? Uh, you always have to check your vitamin D levels. Vitamin D is uh, so important. It's huge. Yeah. And I, I think because we live in Arizona and it's, you know, 360 out of 365 days of <laughs> sunshine. sunshine. Actually, this year we've had a lot of rain. I feel like we we've have. had some overca- had quite a bit. overcast days. So maybe, you know, 350 out of 365 <laughs> days of sunshine. But I find it funny to think about vitamin D. And I mm. remember going after blood tests and having my PC telling me, you know, oh, you're low in vitamin, vitamin D. And I was like, almost that's a impossible. joke. Right? Like, <laughs> what? But I think that's also very important to your overall health. Absolutely. And, um, yeah. As well as sleeping, which is kind of interesting and that I never knew before. So um, let's see some other good hacks. We can talk, of, since we're talking about sleep, let's talk about restless leg syndrome relief. Oh, I've never had that, but Me I've heard either. it's miserable. Yeah, and I never knew until there was a pharmaceutical ad, right, on mm-hmm. television about it. And I'm thinking, yeah. what is that? But I actually have a friend that suffers from this. So oh. uh, Lisa T., this is for you. <laughs> um, it's interesting, but what they're saying is you place a bar of Irish spring body soap. Oh. You unwrap it, right? And but you put it inside your um, sheets at the bottom of your bed. Okay. At the foot of your bed. So like you're to help with, right by your feet. Yeah, right by your feet, um, okay. under the sheets and the blankets. Um, but it's supposed to help you with restless leg syndrome. I wonder why. I don't know. That's interesting. It Irish is spring interesting. soap is pretty strong. It is pretty strong. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I wonder if it's the scent because there's so many echinacea you put on your feet right there's a lot of things that you do put on your feet Mm -hmm. and this you don't necessarily put on your feet right but you put it by your feet in the bed so lisa t you'll have to try it and let let us us know know (laughs) if it works for you girl we don't i don't have it so i don't know but i thought it was very interesting and i think more people have it than i would even think of right yeah i don't know if i know anybody anyone that has it but yeah um, I've, I've certainly heard of it. Right. So Right. And now speaking of your feet and while you're sleeping, <laughs> this was a funny one, but yet <laughs> I've heard this hack before <clears throat> about toothpaste. So toothpaste, I think, can be used for a lot of things. Like, <laughs> I don't want to hear where I heard yeah, that pimples, from. Yeah, yeah. I heard that from somewhere. I don't want to divulge where I heard that from, but... <laughs> <laughs> It's I knew that. I yeah, knew that. yeah. I didn't That's until so I, funny. you know, had that experience, <laughs> and then I was like, oh. But yeah, you can put it on acne, but toothpaste. But um, you can actually put it on your feet while you sleep as well. Huh. Um, you take three tablespoons salt, 
and one tablespoon toothpaste. So basically a three to one ratio. It could mm-hmm. be teaspoons, tablespoons, it doesn't matter. Three to one ratio. And then add a teaspoon of coconut oil. You mix it all together. Okay, it sounds and like then, a scrub. It is kind of a scrub. Yeah. And um, you put it on your feet. And then, you know, you can put your socks on or whatever mm-hmm. to keep it from, you know, messing up your whole bed at night. But it's supposed to, especially that dry cracking yeah. that you get yeah. around your feet. I have been lucky and I'm knocking on wood. <laughs> That I've never had that on my feet. Yeah. Um, but it's supposed to be very, very good for that. And like instant I could um, never gratification. Do it. I could no. never do it. I can't sleep Super with socks, socks on. on. <laughs> I knew that's where you were going. I can only in the wintertime. In the summer, oh, no. I can't so much. I can't ever. No, ever. I just can't. Yeah. No. Well, and then maybe if you can't sleep with socks on, maybe it's something that you do before you go to bed yeah or in the yeah. morning or on the weekend and just leave it on for about an hour or so and, yeah. i would say until it starts to dry out right mm-hmm. and then you could perhaps shower rinse you know them off yeah shower rinse repeat <laughs> remember yeah, right when, <laughs> remember the shampoo when it used to say that does anybody even look at those directions uh, anymore <laughs> lather rinse repeat <laughs> phoebe from friends did a song on that remember that <laughs> yes lather rinse repeat <sighs> Um, okay, so anxiety. Let's talk about anxiety for a moment. I think it's almost impossible to get through midlife without any oh, yeah. some kind of anxiety, no. right? Um, and I thought, okay, so I'm going to talk about this one first. So anxiety, we have actually tried this. It's just, um, we've actually tried this. <laughs> um, but magic mushrooms are like the newest oh, yes. trend in micro dosing. Micro dosing. Yes. Um, with magic mushrooms. <clears throat> For anxiety, I personally didn't feel any difference or yeah. any change. I, I I would say I felt Did you feel a something? calming sensation. But okay. It was nothing crazy. Mm-mm. You know? But again, it's micro dosing and I'm yeah. doing air quotes on that. But uh, magic mushrooms are a, very much a part of modern day healing mm-hmm. um, now, as opposed to where it used to be just right. considered a drug and a psychedelic and yada yada. I was well, so surprised. With, with microdosing, it's very small dosage. It's right. It's not like yeah, when you you're younger and shrooming yeah. and <laughs> drinking a a pitcher yeah. full of <laughs> blended orange juice right you know? right yeah it's not the same as that <laughs> at all um but it is very popular and it's yes it now. is absolutely um, there's a lot of people you know suggesting it for anxiety and mm-hmm. stress um as well as what i would have to assume is what i always thought of when i was younger like expanding your mind and opening right. your mind i didn't feel that part of it but and I personally didn't feel much of it, but I think I was expecting more. Probably, yeah. Um, but yeah. then again, we were probably hanging out by the pool and drinking mm-hmm. and stuff. So, um, but anyways, um, magic mushrooms. That might be a way for you to help in microdosing. Manage stress, yeah. Mm-hmm, to manage stress and anxiety. Um, and the ones that we received were actually in capsule form. Mm-hmm. So they were already pre-measured to a specific dose. Right. And I have heard of people and people have reached out that have said that they take it every day to go to work. And I was like, before I took it, I was all uh, appalled. And I'm like, oh, they do it before they go to work. And how is that possible? And But with the limited effects that I feel now, I can see how they would right. do that. But it's up to you. It's a personal choice. And yeah. do you do it before you go to work? I did it on the weekends first. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but and I don't think I ever did it before I went to work. Um, but it is something that a lot of people have experienced. Yeah. You know, a relief from anxiety. Um, yeah, yeah, and good results. But what I thought was very, very interesting, and I'd never heard this before, um, and anxiety, I just feel like the world we live in these days is just so anxiety ridden, right? Like, how do you not? Right. I mean, maybe you don't watch the news, which is what I do. Yeah, I think but, too, we're just overstimulated. Yeah. Very much overstimulated. I mean, between, you know, the phones and the computers and right. the, just everything the going on yeah. all around. Yeah. And I think the phone is like a huge thing. Oh, I do too. You know, yeah. because you, you always have it next to you. Right. Because this, this is the way Your that everyone line. contacts me. Yes. And then there's also the social media The you know, I like to play a game on my phone when I, you know, have nothing else to right. do. You know, right. it's like right. constantly looking at that. So I just really think that. 
you're, we're just overstimulated. It's okay yeah. to be in a quiet place with no yeah. sound, no phone. Just yeah. leave it in the other room, you know. And I feel that I crave that. Mm-hmm. When, like, you know, usually Sunday is, or when the kids all come over and the grandkids, and mm-hmm. we all have a, either a family brunch or a family dinner, and and my children's phones pinging all the time constantly creates mm-hmm. anxiety for me. And I'm like, how do you manage that? Yeah. Like, I just yeah. can't. Um, but this is something that I'd never heard of. It's easy. Anyone can do it anytime, anywhere. Humming. Oh, humming calms you down and calms down um, your nervous system. Wow, I like that. So yeah, not because we've talked about music before, right? You know, to bring you to your happy place and you know, etc. But um, humming, yeah, yeah, I like that. Humming to um, yeah calms your nervous system and brings your anxiety level down. I know I kind of like that too. I thought that was very simplistic, mm-hmm. right? Um, you know, but there's just so many different hacks. Um, under eye bags. This is a good one. Oh, I need this. Two cold spoons. Oh yes. I've tried that. Yeah. It does, has, work. does it work? Mm-hmm. Do you like it? Okay. For the yeah. instant. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The bags. Just put a couple spoons maybe in your freezer for a little while. And yeah. Then it doesn't, them. it doesn't happen as much as it used to. I feel like as I'm getting older, I'm kind of, I still have ter- terrible allergies, but I feel like I'm kind of growing out of them a little bit. Oh, good. Um, but when I was younger, they were so bad. And I mean, I would just, my eyes would get really itchy and puffy. And and so it's also actually, it felt really good to have cold spoons you oh. know, because of that itchiness and burning sensation from my allergies. But it definitely helps the puffiness. Absolutely. Well, let's see. Let's wrap it up with a few more um, quick tips. <laughs> Um, so grounding, otherwise known as earthing our bodies, yeah, filling the earth, like take off your shoes and walk, walk in the grass, the grass yes. or the, the dirt, yeah, yeah, improves sleep, reduces pain, reduces stress, speeds wound healings, which I never oh. would have thought of. Yeah, that was something different. Hmm. Um, and reduces viscosity, which is the thickness of your blood. Oh, wow. <clears throat> so you know, if you're getting older, maybe you need blood thinners or uh-huh. what have you, but maybe just take your socks off and your shoes and, yeah. and walk through. I walk barefoot um, all summer. Long. The grass, yeah. Sauna time, right? It's just yeah. all about a good sweat. And if you don't have a sauna, come to Phoenix in the summer. <laughs> You'll sweat it all up, but it's, it's not, not really quite one humid, of the best. But... Ones. Yeah, it's not humid, <laughs> but that's what a sun is, right? It's that dry heat. That yeah, it, I guess it, so. It, yeah, it takes it out of you. Yeah, um, but it removes toxins from your body, and something that's always ever and ever so important. Like we talked about with your health and your diet and your exercise, which are the three staples of midlife hydration. Oh, hydrate, hydrate, is huge. hydrate, hydrate, and maybe include some watermelon or cucumber juice or electrolyte packages like liquid mm-hmm. IV or something into yeah. your water. Um, what I thought was interesting and that I never attributed to dehydration, which so many things I attributed to, is brain fog. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. 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 It's much worse when you're dehydrated. And of course, for your skin. Okay, dry skin brushing. Brushing? Yeah. So you take a stiff bristle, large brush, mm-hmm. And with long strokes towards the heart, okay, brush your skin. Proves not only the look and feel of your skin, yes, circulation, uh, detoxification, wow. fat tissue, unclogs pores, it exfoliates, and possibly even helps reduce cellulite. There you go. Interesting. Yeah. I like it. We appreciate you um, tuning in with us today, talking about these midlife health hacks and tips and tricks. If you have any that you'd like to share with us, please reach out on any of our social platforms or our website at Let's Talk Midlife Crisis. And that just about wraps it up for today. Thank you for joining us on Let's Talk Midlife Crisis. Embrace the change. Join the conversation on our website at letstalkmidlifecrisis.com or our Facebook or Instagram and YouTube channels. We'd love to hear from you guys.